Yeah, he sure does, and he's uh, he's doing so well with the stock cars. He's taking a lot of our Saturday Night Thunderheads down there with him, but uh, I'm sure they're back here with us tonight. So. Well, once again, only six will transfer. As we've said before, it's the inverted start, the faster qualifiers on the rear. This should be very interesting. Delordo and Verdine bring them down. Oh. The That's not going to happen. My a double flip, a car upside down, barrel rolling. That's Kenya. No, that's Mac McClellan. Mac McClellan in the other 25 car. Mac McClellan in the other 25 car. Kenyon, they had identical cars. Cliff Jacobs built both cars. They were identical, but that was the uh, Mac McClellan car out of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, he, that was a terrible barrel roll. The two cars got into the fence up there. And uh, Mac McClellan barrel rolled down that front straightaway for a long, long way. That was terrible. Now, once again, we saw the green come out, but it was not even a good green. We knew it was going to go back to yellow, so that was not even going to be a start. Yeah, that's it's a terrible thing to witness something like that when you see a car that gets into the fence like that and just barrel rolls. Boy, you, those things are snap rolling so quickly down there. Uh, you know, your guy is knocked out right away, I'm sure, because his arms were flailing out. Uh, that's why really, you're wearing the arm restraints, exactly the neck right. brake, so if that's there exactly is a driver right. that's knocked unconscious, all the safety devices keep all the uh, extremities inside the cockpit, allowing that cage to do its job. It appeared that the cage did its job, but unfortunately one of the arms perhaps got loose from the arm restraint. Yes, it's. Uh, you're right. The cage did its job. The race car, uh, that part of the race car, seemed to stay intact pretty much to the end. But uh, it's still, you know, the G forces are just tremendous when you're in an accident like that. The thing just going and going and going. And there were actually there was two cars upside down. But of course, Mac McClellan's is one that appeared to be much worse. Yeah, and and unfortunately, I cannot even at this point identify the other driver that was upside down. We're trying to get that for you. We want to make very sure before we actually identify the other driver that was upside down because obviously he has race fans around the country as well watching in. So let's uh, let's make sure we have that if uh, they in the truck can uh, check with us. It's Rick Delardo right there. He's uh, he was being passed on that start and evidently stopped down there in the corner for a little farther. I don't know exactly how he was involved, but uh, it was didn't look to be a very good thing at all. Well, once again. We are not, we're being told now it was Steve Barth, the other driver, and there is Steve. Steve was the driver that was upside down. You can see the concern on his face right now. You can almost read his expression. He's, obviously, he is okay, but he's concerned right now for a fellow driver. Yes, that's exactly right. Whenever something like this happens, obviously, you know, this is a very close-knit fraternity. Everybody has their little spats like Doug Coletta and then Danny Drynan a while ago, but I'll tell you what, if they were uh, in an accident close to it, they would be the first to help each other if any kind of a problem ar arose. Uh, racing has always been a very close-knit, very tough organization. You know, you're, you're close friends, but you don't want to get too close. It's really a hard relationship to explain, but everyone out there feels it. And how many times have you said there, but for the grace of God, go I. In any given racing situation, you see a friend, an associate, an acquaintance have a bad spill that perhaps was not their fault, something triggered it, and you think, my God, that could have been me. Well, of course you do. You, you're thinking about uh, just being uh, you know, trying to get everything back together. Well, obviously, the safety crew is still down there working uh, with the car, working with uh, Mac McClellan, a very violent set of barrel rolls down the front stretch at what was to have been the start of heat race number four. It has been an evening that has delayed because of accidents. First, the accident with uh, Bob Ciccone, and, and once again, Bob uh, being examined at the hospital for a possible broken arm. This situation involving Mac McClellan, the safety crew still in there working with the driver from Dayton, Ohio, and uh, he's been concentrating on some other business efforts and some stock car competition, but back in the midget here, this evening at Indianapolis Raceway Park. A lot of concern by the fans. We'll take a check and we'll come back with you. Stay with us. I can see all four. We're back at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the aftermath of a horrendous crash here at what was, in fact, a false start of the third qualifying heat race. And if you have just joined us, it is the second spectacular crash of the night. The good news for Bob Ciccone, apparently, and for those of you who have been with us throughout the hour here this evening, apparently uh, Ciccone obviously in good shape after the interview that uh, he insisted on granting as he got into the ambulance. But uh, we are waiting for additional word here on Mac McClellan. Steve Barth has uh, come to our broadcast position here, and perhaps uh, we can get his account of what happened. Steve, step right in here. Don't be bashful. Tell me what happened up there. Uh, we're just coming down the front stretch here, and uh, 
Mac McClellan and the number 41 got together. Mac came right up in front of me, and that was all I seen. It was upside down after that. So I don't know who got. I think Mac come up on 41, and they got into each other, and then got in front of me. You're obviously okay. Yeah, I'll be all right. Car's not too good, so see what we can do about that. Your emotions when something like this happens. What goes through your mind? Boy, just hoping that thing stops without hitting something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're glad to see that you're okay, and we'll wait for additional worth. This is uh, Steve Barth, who was involved in that crash, and we thank Steve for coming by. We're going to uh, continue to monitor the situation and update it as we have the opportunity here. And I think, frankly, for the moment, that we are not going to show you the replay of that because it was very, very violent. And some things are best seen only once. So we're going to stay off of that for a moment and hope to have some good news to report to you just as soon as possible. Gary Lee and Larry Rice calling the action here this evening in what has been a tumultuous evening on Saturday Night Thunder. And it started with such promise with two main events to run here this evening and the four qualifying heat races. The first of those main events marred by a couple of crashes, a little controversy right off the bat as the man who had won four races coming in here, Doug Kalitta, was involved in a first lap tangle in the first feature that was triggered by Danny Drynan. Kalitta got out of the car and said he thought Drynan hit him on purpose. Drynan said, no, we don't race that way, and we are, in fact, friends. So words exchanged in the heat of battle quickly overshadowed by the crash involving Bob Sacconi. Sacconi, as we said, apparently okay, possibility of a fractured left arm, and that is the situation we're continuing to monitor over at Methodist Hospital here, overshadowing all of that, a violent crash involving Mac McClellan as we went to the start of the third qualifying heat race. If uh, Depending on how things evolve here this evening, we hope to still bring you the 30-lap main event. That would be tonight's feature, having opened with the rained-out feature from last week. We're going to do our best to bring you up to date on the additional news from around the uh, racing world, but right now let's bring in the guys up in the booth. It's never, ever fun to cover this kind of a moment, guys. Well, certainly, uh, Dave and Larry, it isn't. But to underscore what we've talked about, these cars are built to take abuse. The drivers wear the arm restraints to keep the arms inside in case the driver is knocked out. The, the helmet tether right here under the arm, the neck brace. So, And Mac had everything in there. And the car, as we saw it go over uh, a multiple uh, barrel roll situation, the cage was intact. As we indicated before, we're not going to reshow the accident because of the violence of it. But at this point, we don't know, but it appeared like the cage did its job. Well, you know, you can only hope that it, it all did its job. Uh, Mac was very careful. He's uh, He's been racing with ASA cars. He's been racing uh, midgets for a long, long time. I used to uh, watch him run every night out here at the Speedrome, and he was always a very careful kind of a guy. He always did things very cautiously. He's always the first to uh, come and complain if he thought somebody was doing something out of the way. So uh, he just got caught up in a bad situation, and hopefully all of the safety equipment that uh, USAC requires and most of the people around the country require have done its job. It was a case where he uh, came along. This was the second car. In fact, uh, Mel was driving a sister car to this, the uh, the Jacobs uh, chassis. And uh, Mac came along, had some sponsorship money, which is pretty typical of racing today. Hey, I've got enough sponsorship money to buy some tires for this particular race. Let's go racing. So he has really a brand new race car because uh, Mel was driving the, the sister car, which is a couple of years old. Well, he's been heavily involved with wins and their new program in racing. The wins Extend yeah, Challenge. Yeah, the Wins Extend Challenge. And, and they were trying to bring along young drivers. They connected with Mac. He was going to kind of run the program. He was getting some ASA experience through it and also some midget uh, races through it. So he was trying to pull this whole program together for them and for some of the younger drivers in the uh, USAC organization. And, uh, you know, I, I think possibly that's a good thing for wins and, and for Mac. And once again, he's also a businessman in Dayton, Ohio, has a Goodyear store that he operates. His dad uh, had uh, Dale's Goodyear for many, many years. In fact, was a sponsor of Mac when Mac came in the midgets and, and sprints. He's won a couple times in the sprints. He's won a couple times in the midgets. Always very good on the flat tracks. But again, he's been racing uh, the ASA cars, hoping to go to stock car racing. That's why we have not seen Mac on Saturday Thunder uh, so far this season. Today, back to you. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, the aftermath of the accident here. This is the 50th anniversary of uh, the show. Here is Mac McClellan earlier today. This is the 50th telecast of Saturday Night Thunder produced by the Lingner Group. And uh, Terry Lingner has made, I think, a good call here this evening in deciding that we will not take another look at this moment until we know more about what has transpired. And so we continue to cover the aftermath. And we will, I think, take a the moment. In Davis Bay. Information slow in coming, but it is coming. We have just been advised that Mac McClellan is semi-conscious 
at the track hospital awaiting the arrival of that helicopter. I find that very, very encouraging news after the crash that he took. The preliminary indications of injuries are that they are severe, but Mac McClellan is reported semi-conscious. Now that confirms an earlier indication that we had from trackside that he was indeed struggling as they were attempting to treat him, which is always a, a good indication in the case of a serious injury. So the, the initial word on Mac McClellan, semi-conscious at the track hospital. The, we hear the helicopter in the background. He will be transported. The cleanup is complete, and we're just about a lap away from going green, guys. It's tough under these circumstances to muster the enthusiasm, but the guys are back out there to do their job, and I think we owe them a good call on E-Race number three.